Thanks for getting up early, coming to see me talk. Um, if anyone can't hear me, then move forward, basically. Um, so obviously, you know, my name's Becky. I am a designer and illustrator based here in Melbourne. And I've been working freelance for quite a while now, probably about 15 years. Um, I'm a bit multidisciplinary. I, you know, work in lots of different areas and mediums and have many different clients and I also make products and exhibit my work as well and have been recently making books too. And I'm also represented by the Jackie Winter Group. Um, so as you may know, we'll have Jeremy just told you that this, the Creative Ones have now have a theme and this theme is happiness, um, which seemed appropriate to me because my work is often described as happy um, or optimistic and I'd say my whole demeanour is pretty happy. In fact, I would probably describe myself as a happiness expert. Um, so I thought today I would tell you about some of the things that have kept me happy and continue to keep me happy in my work and in my life as well, because for me, those two things aren't very separated. Um, some of these things are very simple and they're not objects or material things. And some of them uh, you know, kind of rules that I live by or things that I've learnt along the way which I think have made what I do, uh, kept me happy in what I do. So the title of my talk is Happiness Is. So I'm going to go through a bunch of things for me which represent happiness. Um, and the first thing is my sketchbook. Um, obviously as an illustrator, I love to draw. Um, and from a young age, drawing was all I wanted to do. Um, a lot of the things that I am doing is not necessarily sitting in front of my computer, it's sort of putting things together. And um, So I really have to force myself to work in my sketchbook now. Um, and when I do, you know, I really love it because it's, it creates a whole different process for me. And I think that process is the most rewarding one. And the work that I make from that sketchbook kind of stuff is definitely my favourite work. So that's number one of happiness. Happiness is making mistakes. I use this image as an example of um, making a mistake because it was something that was a mistake but turned into something good. Um, there was some crepe paper that I was saving for a project on my desk and it was sort of bundled up and it had some water spilt on it. And so, um, but when it dried and the way the colours bled into it, I think it made it way more beautiful. So it was a, it was a happy accident, I would say. Um, you can learn a lot from mistakes. And if you don't make mistakes, perhaps you're not trying hard enough or pushing yourself hard enough. Um, and I've got lots of good examples of mistakes in my life. Um, I ran a clothing label called Princess Tina which I started in, I think, around the year 2000, and I finished off in 2009. Um, that's some bits of Princess Tina. Um, I ran it with my partner, Raf. He did all the, I did all the design and selling, and he did all the manufacture and production and sort of other bits and pieces. Um, I guess it was a fairly successful business. There was a demand for it. You know, we had Princess Tina fans, um, we would, sold to a lot of stores overseas, we manufactured offshore, there's you know, a whole lot of things that sounds like it was a fairly successful label. Um, but I guess the whole time I was doing Princess Tina, I was still doing freelance work as well, and freelance work was the thing that still kept main, making the most money and sort of paying our rent and doing like that, but we still kept doing Princess Tina. Um, and I think the reason that we didn't make a lot of money from it was because, a little secret, we completely sucked at running a fashion business. <laughs> completely. Um, we were always running late with our designs. We were constantly pleading factories to make samples for us because we were running late with our designs. 
Um, we often show our collections, you know, one month later than everybody else, which is a really bad thing in the fashion industry because sure, shops have budgets and they need to align those budgets to people. And if they don't know if they want to buy your things, then, you know, they can't hold on to budget for you. Um, when the product arrived, we were generally, generally late in delivering it. Um, we did things like we took big orders from overseas stores that we knew nothing about, didn't take deposits, then delivered stock and never got paid. Um, lots of things like that. But of course we didn't realise we were bad at it until we stopped it. And it was about one year later after we had finished the business and Raf had decided to start his new business which was his first truck, Beatbox Kitchen. And I, you know, then my freelance work had doubled and we were, you know, things were going really well. And we kind of looked back over the past nine years and we're like, what the fuck were we doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, so Princess Tina, in short, was a big mistake, really. Um, a fun mistake, a mistake that led us to doing, you know, lots of partying and lots of overseas trips and to meet great people. A mistake that perhaps helped us in other parts of our business and definitely helped me creatively as a person. But really, it was a mistake. Um, but of course, we did learn from this mistake. And we learned that, first of all, our combined personalities were really bad at running a fashion business. Um, but it also showed us what our strengths were. Um, and of course, there's been lots more mistakes since then. And I've learned much from them as well. Um, and I think those mistakes were as important as formative as all the successes that I've had as well. My next happiness is riding my bike, a very simple pleasure, um, but it's something that makes me infinitely happy. And I guess as a mother with two children, where often I feel like I don't leave the house for days, riding my bike feels like the ultimate freedom for me. Um, and often if I'm struggling in my studio, I can go for a bike ride and within 10 minutes I feel completely different and way better. Um, and I guess, you know, when you're kind of in those slumps, it doesn't have to be a bike ride. It can be a walk in the park or just a change of scenery. But, you know, I really value being able to do those things. And it's a really important part of my creative process, being able to get out of that space. So it definitely keeps me happy. Um, happiness is ignoring the rules. So this is a series of pictures of one of my children, Ari, who's really good at breaking rules. He does it all the time, um, especially in a house where there really isn't very many rules. He still manages to find them and break them. Um, so here he is putting confetti all over my office. Um, so this is something that I've only recently learned about myself, is that I'm a rule breaker. I never thought of myself as a rule breaker. I was a pretty rebellious, crazy teenager. But on the whole, I think I'm a pretty good citizen. So rule breaker didn't really sit with me. But then the more I thought about the way things have gone for me, the more I discovered I, I was a rule breaker. So I guess in the late 90s when I was studying, I, was really, I studied textile design at RIT. I was really different from a lot of the other students in my course. While everyone else was happily designing florals for bed linen or patterns for ties and you know boxer shorts and things like that I was obsessing over the then you know of underground kind of streetwear industry that was just starting to happen and I would use any opportunity I could to, to put this obsession into my work and I worked really hard in that course and I was lucky enough to have very supportive lecturers and my graduate folio at the end ended up looking really different to everybody else's um, but I still managed to win you know, the awards and, and graduated with the highest marks of that year. And I think also I got freelance work straight away, which I didn't intend, but I think that was because my work was quite different. So it was my willingness to break the rules of what a textile design folio should look like, um, which made me stand out and sort of started things to happen with me. Um, it wasn't something I was intending, but it, I guess it's something that has led me to my path to what you know, to being here and now. And I think I've continued to sort of break rules throughout my career. When I first started working, it was in very male-dominated sort of streetwear, surfboardy, skateboard kind of industries. And I really had to push to sort of get into those industries. And, um, but I never thought about it. It was just what I wanted to do. So I was subconsciously ignoring the rules of what I was supposed to do. And yeah, I think that's definitely helped me on my path. Um, my next happiness is having my cats around. <laughs> I 
I do lots of work at night and um, just out of, I don't know, I really love working at night. It's really quiet. I get lots done. Um, and yeah, my cats keep me company. They make, I don't know, it's really nice to have them there when everybody else is asleep and they're just, this was literally taken at 1.30 in the morning last week. That's, that's what they do, they just hang out for me. And it's really awesome and definitely keeps me happy. Um, happiness is diversity. Uh, so obviously I love doing lots of different things um, and it's keep, that's what keeps me happiest in what I do. And I've been lucky enough to branch out into many different mediums and fields. Um, art direction, animation design, stage design, product design. Um, I've made some books. I've designed a whole bunch of DIY projects, just to name a few things. Um, and I'm not really sure if this has come out of opportunity or if it's come out of me getting bored really easily. Um, but regardless, uh, it's still, it also something that makes me keep learning all the time and not stay still, which I think is really important for designers or for me in particular, I think. Um, so these are a few of the more recent things that I've done. There's some things I made for a market, um, a stage design and props and a whole lot of stuff I designed for Justine Clark's latest tour. Um, that was a quilt that I designed for um, Inside Out magazine. I got to style a photo shoot and design a whole lot of DIY projects for it. So that was a quilt that I designed and had made. I can't sew, so I didn't sew it. Um, and some mushrooms. And then this is some work that I did for Libra through Jackie Winter. So um, still some very commercial work, but using pattern design and illustration and things. Um, some chocolates I designed for a Japanese department store. Um, a, my Urban Outfitters collab, which has recently come out which is a whole series of products, and then um, a card that I designed for Hungry Workshop. So I like to spread myself all over the place, basically, get my fingers in all different types of pies. Um, happiness is finding inspiration. When I'm inspired, I literally tingle. I do things like lose track of all time and find myself working until three o'clock in the morning and have, you know, look at the clock and not realise that it was that late. Um, so I get completely carried away. And it, for me, as a designer, that is the absolute best feeling, that sort of being caught up in something which is really, you're really excited about. Um, there's endless places to find inspiration. Um, in fact, I recently wrote a book about it. So you should go and buy it. <laughs> <laughs> And then you can find out all about inspiration. <laughs> um, I think also as a creative person, you get to do things like visit exhibitions and look at blogs and read books and waste time on Pinterest and Instagram and find images like this. <laughs> and it all counts as work, which is amazing. <laughs> That, you know, being able to find things like that makes me really happy. <laughs> um, happiness is community. I took this photo of some of my friends at one of my um, partner's food trucks one night. And he's done a really great job of creating community. But I think we're really lucky to live in Melbourne. Um, we're supported by a great creative community. That will turn out in droves to support markets, workshops, exhibitions, gigs, food trucks, talks, um, running your own race. So obviously the design industry is a very competitive industry, as, as are lots of different industries. Um, and it's really easy to compare yourself to your peers, and, you know, especially if they're doing well or perhaps they got a job that you really wanted or, you know, it's really easy to feel jaded and ripped off. Um, but I think that kind of feeling is a really big waste of energy and it will get you nowhere. Um, for when I first, um, just after I graduated, I was lucky enough to share a studio with two friends of mine who were starting a clothing label. And it was right at the time when they were starting their label and it was a really exciting time for them. And almost every day I used to walk into the studio and there'd be like, you know, some amazing hookup with some person that we'd 
all mutually admired from overseas was, was giving them props or hooking up with them or, you know, some huge box of, like, bathing ape clothing would turn up for them. Like, there were just all these amazing things were happening for them all the time. And, of course, I was genuinely thrilled for them. But on the inside, I was completely teeming with jealousy. Um, you know, we'd graduated at the same time. It didn't make any sense why. Why was all this stuff happening so quickly for them and it wasn't happening for me? But then one day, I decided that actually, you know, I was really lucky to be around this and see all this stuff happen. Um, and that I could actually watch and learn from it and be inspired by it um, rather than be envious of it. And when I did that, things ha started to happen for me too, but at a completely different pace. And it didn't matter because I'd stopped worrying about what other people had, were doing and just made sure what I was doing, I was just making sure I was doing a really good of what I was doing, good job of what I was doing. And then st things started to happen. Thank you.